The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra embraces what it means to be Ultra, a phone that transcends the smartphone category. It offers more than any other phone and somehow manages to improve upon last year's Ultra in every way. The Galaxy S24 Ultra has better battery life, faster performance, and even better cameras, so you will also pay a bit more for the improvements. The new AI features are the only things that can slow this phone down except for Samsung's aging and terrible software, which buries every exciting thing under layers upon layers of settings and menus. When you see the Ultra in action, it's worth the price, and some features are downright magical, but there's more room than ever for improvement at the top. I bought a Galaxy S23 Ultra last year, trading a Galaxy S21 Ultra for it, and I am sad to report that trade-in deals and discounts at launch are not as enticing as they were a year ago. If you are trading up from last year's model, expect to pay hundreds over your trade value. I would still say it's worth making the leap just this once. Older phones are going to be left out of the newest AI features more and more with every update. That means values could plummet the first time Samsung delivers bad news and drops the features built in on the Galaxy S22 Ultra or something even newer. Is this phone worth such a high price? If you are asking that question, you are reviewing wrong review. You want the Galaxy S24 Plus, which is probably worth it. This is the Ultra, this is the extreme phone, the one that does what no other phone can do. You can't put a normal price tag on Ultra, it doesn't fit. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is indistinguishable from the Galaxy S23 Ultra which doesn't mean there are no differences, but rather the changes are inconsecutional. The speaker grills are different, the microphones moved a bit, but mostly the new phone looks like the old phone. That's too bad because while Samsung's Ultra phone uses a certain refinement, it isn't very interesting at a glance. A deeper inspection is rewarding, the black glass is layers upon layers of metallic paint which gives the phone an eerie depth, especially in the ghostly natural grey titanium finish. The violet finish is my favorite with a great contrast against the polished metal. Samsung pays great attention to detail when it comes to color, materials and finish. Each color has a subtly hued frame that complements the new Gorilla Glass armor pack. The titanium Black is all black, while other color options age into warmer frame tones. Apple fans like to point out of the symmetry of their phone as a pinnacle of its design. Frankly, Samsung is more smart than symmetrical. I prefer having power and volume buttons on the same side. It means I don't fill my photo gallery with accidental screenshots every time I grab my phone. Like Apple, Samsung has opted for titanium on the frame this year, but it doesn't make as much difference as it does on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. The Pro Max managed to shade considerable weight this year versus last year about half an ounce. The Galaxy Ultra? It's a single gram lighter at most. If you have never played with an Ultra, you really need to pick one up and pop the pen. Did you know the pen clicks? There is no reason for it. It could just pop out, spring load it, but instead the S Pen has a clicky top that is extremely satisfying. Oh, the S Pen is also motion sensing stylus with a Bluetooth camera remote button, but Samsung hasn't neglected the clicky top. Of course, the S Pen isn't just built for fun, it's one of the most surprisingly capable accessories ever. It is as precise as a professional drawing tool, not like a big, clumsy, rubber-tipped stylus that you can buy for an iPhone. It also has Bluetooth built in so the side button can act as a remote control for other features on your phone, especially the camera. That's right, the Galaxy S24 Ultra ships with a remote camera shutter release, which is an accessory I actually bought to go with my Nikon DSLR. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is flat this year, ending a run of screen curvature that began with the double black diamond slope of the Galaxy Note 8 and suddenly resolved itself into a signature Samsung look that redefined and reduced the effect of the bezel 
around the edges. On the front and back, Galaxy S23 Ultra has gently rounded curves that make the phone feel much nicer to hold. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is more sharp and though it isn't uncomfortable, it feels conspicuously big. The display on the Galaxy S24 Ultra is excellent, as good as you'd hope to find on a premier smartphone. It's huge, bright and colorful, especially using the vivid color tone option. There are plenty of adaptions for this display including adaptive brightness and color tones that measure ambient lighting and adjust the display to look its best. In bright outdoor light, the display can boost to a stunning 2600 nits which isn't quite the brightest you can find but you won't need any brighter. Even more interesting might be the extra dim option. The Galaxy S24 Ultra can maintain good color fidelity even down at one nit of brightness. That's dim enough that you could almost check your messages in a movie theater but then you'd be an extra dim ultra jerk but you could. There is an always on display mode but Samsung also still makes its unique S view cases which provide a small window for time, weather and notifications peeping through a wallet cover case. It's very cool case feature the Samsung never abandoned even if we haven't checked them out for a while. Could the Galaxy S24 Ultra display be any better? Absolutely. There are phone displays that can reach 144Hz refresh rate too that may be faster than a human eye can actually see. It would be nice to Samsung to give up the fight against Dolby Vision on its phone displays and TV sets. If you watch a lot of Netflix, shows looks better when you compare a display with Dolby Vision against a display without. It seems like a silly omission for Samsung not to support Dolby's HDR video standard when it supports Dolby Audio. It has become abundantly clear that Samsung is focused entirely on hardware and has no interest in improving its software. The software on the Galaxy S24 Ultra is terrible and One UI is becoming unusable. Even the simplest features are bogged down with options and menus and Samsung can't seem to make a single decision about what's best for its users. I am going to give Samsung a year to fix its software problems too, I suspect it will take two years or more to dig out of the current mess. Everything that was wrong with Samsung software has gotten worse and the problems infect every new edition like a disease. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is loaded with features but where do you find them? Where do you find the new AI translation tools or set up the AI feature that rewrites your text messages? Where do you turn an AI to edit photos or AI to summarize a web page? All in the same place, sadly. All of the new Samsung Galaxy AI features are buried in settings and they are not at the surface. There are 22 different options in the settings menu. Option 16 of 22 is advanced features. Tap on this you will find advanced intelligence which isn't actually what AI standards for, is it? In any case, that's where Samsung has hidden all the cool new features for its flagship smartphone under the 16th setting option, 3 layers down. I have talked to Samsung about this and they recognize that it's a problem. Features are hidden, everything gets buried in settings as if that is a place we expect to find features as disparate as wireless power sharing, parental controls for children and always on display widgets. In a feeble attempt to inform users about everything the phone can do, the Galaxy S24 Ultra will occasionally bubble up messages and suggestions for things to try. Sadly, Samsung phones are overloaded with messages and suggestions. Galaxy phones will infamously serve you an advertisement on your brand new Galaxy phone, imploring you to buy that brand new Galaxy phone. That's not how you educate people. Take it from me, a former high school teacher, if you simply tell your users about a new feature once, you haven't taught them to use it. Samsung needs to take a big step back and figure out how to encourage users to try features they will enjoy. Samsung also needs to remove the features that aren't being used and hide the ones that don't need to be visible. As for the new AI features, they are a mixed bag of amazing magic and useless doggerel.
If you get a chance to use the AI translation on a phone call, it's like science fiction. It feels like you have stuck a babel fish into your ear and you are living in a fantasy future. Samsung could write don't panic on the phone and ship it with a towel. Other AI features are useful but only to a point the AI writing style feature can adapt your text messages to a variety of different styles including a professional tone and more playful messages replete with emojis and hashtags. In practice the difference were not very useful and I mostly just stuck with what I had written. Samsung also over promised on this feature. I distinctly remember reps saying the phone would convert my words to Shakespeare, but I have seen nothing like this on my S24 Ultra. This writing style and translation features are built into the Samsung keyboard, so they work across multiple apps. Unfortunately, Samsung has utterly broken its software keyboard during my test period. I had some of the worst trouble with autocorrect and an on-screen keyboard that I have ever had. The keyboard would often capitalize words in the middle of a sentence for no reason even worse. It would autocorrect partial words and automatically insert some nonsensical phrase or string of characters into my typing. While typing contractions, most keyboards are smart enough to insert the apostrophe, but on the Samsung keyboard, the autocorrect tried to insert whole new words after my contraction. It was making up content out of context and it was completely wrong. When I went back to change the error, the keyboard was quite unfriendly. While the Apple iPhone keyboard assumes that a backspace after autocorrect means the autocorrection was bad. The Samsung keyboard sticks to its guns and makes changing errors incredibly tedious. I suspect that if I am a diligent with the Samsung keyboard and I keep correcting all of its elementary errors, I will eventually teach to it right properly. I don't have time for this. I'm not sure how Samsung broke its keyboard so badly, but it's terrible and needs an immediate update. Some of the AI features that carried over from the Google Pixel 8 family have turned out to be a disappointment. As well, Samsung promised that its voice recorder app would offer transcripts and summaries just like the recorder app on the Google Pixel. In practice, Samsung's app is not as advanced or useful as the Pixel version. It's slower, less accurate and does not provide a live transcription of the conversation as it happens. The image editing features are also less impressive on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, they are on the Pixel 8 Pro. The Galaxy gets Samsung's take on the magic editor tool dubbed Generative Edit, which lets you select objects in your photo to move, resize, or erase them. When you erase an object or a whole background, the phone can use AI to replace that part of the image. What the Samsung phone lacks are the best editing tools available on the Pixel, namely the Photo Unblock tool that sharpens even old photos you didn't take with your smartphone and the best tech option that combines multiple photos to get rid of closed eyes and ugly expressions. Yet as much as I complain about Samsung software, there are simply things you can do with a Galaxy phone, especially the Galaxy S24 Ultra, that you can't do with anything else. I love Samsung DeX, which turns your phone into something that acts more like a Chromebook. When you plug it into a monitor with a keyboard and mouse, you get a new home screen with Windows and a dock and everything runs smoothly. Why is this useful? I have a computer at home, but my corporate IT guys don't like me using it for work stuff instead. I use my phone, which is already set up with work and personal accounts. If I need to get work done at home or even while I am traveling, I don't need to bring my work laptop. I can just plug my Galaxy S24 Ultra into a USB hub and now I have all my work and personal stuff in one place. The Galaxy S23 Ultra was our overall best camera phone of last year, so rumors that Samsung would be dropping the optical zoom from 10x to 5x set off a flurry of concern. The 10x zoom was the standout feature on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, set from the 200 megapixel sensor, the two zoom lenses, the 100x digital astrophotography, the AI image enhancements, and everything else the phone could do. Still, it's odd for Samsung to take a step backwards, especially where specs are concerned. 
Let's start with the Galaxy S24 Ultra's 5x zoom lens. Samsung has not taken a step backwards, more a step sideways. The Galaxy S24 Ultra still has the best zoom camera you can find on a smartphone. It is better than the Galaxy S23 Ultra's 10x zoom and it's much better than the 5x zoom you will find on the iPhone 50 Pro Max most of the time like when you are really using the zoom to its full extent. When you zoom in to 10x or even 100x, the Galaxy S24 Ultra produces images with better color and much better dynamic range than the Galaxy S23 Ultra, where the older camera made images look flat, you will see more depth and shadow with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. What you won't see is plenty of detail. Samsung has sacrificed the fine details in images for better overall quality. It's good trade. Those 10x and 100x zoom images from the S23 Ultra look terrible. Sure, you could make out some details, but they are mixed with noise and blur like a virtual chopped salad. On the Galaxy S24 Ultra, you won't see as much, but you will be happier sharing those photos because they actually look like good pictures rather than police evidence. Check out some camera sample from Galaxy S24 Ultra and some comparison between Galaxy S24 Ultra, S23 Ultra or iPhone 15 Pro Max. Ever since Apple started making its own Bionic chipset for the iPhone, we haven't seen an Android phone that could beat Apple's best iPhone in raw performance. That ends with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. The Ultra is just as fast as the iPhone 15 Pro Max and in many ways it's even faster. You may never notice the performance gains but I have to give credit where credit is due. Qualcomm and Samsung have managed to top Apple's silicon for the first time in years. What does that mean? In the real world, everything that you could do on your smartphone, you can now do faster. If you play games like Call of Duty Mobile or Genshin Impact, you can play at the highest settings and experience fluid frame rates and shutter-free gaming. Pair your game with an Xbox or PlayStation controller via Bluetooth and you will be destroying noobs on pathetic pixels and cheap Motorola phones in your multiplayer arena of choice. Seriously, having a phone that responds so quickly to your commands and movements is a, is a huge win for multiplayer games. Is the Galaxy S24 Ultra a gaming phone? Then 
You'd better believe it. I tested the Galaxy S24 Ultra against the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro, a phone that is truly made for gaming. The Galaxy S24 Ultra had no problem beating the ROG Phone 8 in every metric, even producing a higher frame rates on the newest games. If gaming is not your thing, you can still feel the performance benefits. I edit photos in Adobe Lightroom and on my Galaxy S24 Ultra, I can move the adjustment sliders freely and watch my photo change in real time. In side-by-side -side tests, using the new Adobe Intelligent Masking features, the Galaxy S24 Ultra was able to find and select my foreground subject in seconds faster than my older Galaxy S23 Ultra. The only features that cause a delay on the Galaxy S24 Ultra are the new AI features, and that's ironic. For the first time in year, Samsung commands a lead over its rival Apple, but it loaded the Galaxy S24 Ultra with AI features that Apple has skipped so far. Instead of feeling like everything moves faster on my Galaxy, I have to wait while the AI composes new text messages or makes edits in the photo gallery. Those features aren't worth the wait if there was no waiting. If writing suggestions appeared in real time the way Adobe Lightroom changes my photos, I'd be amazed by the AI tools and I'd use them more often. Instead, every time I see the AI starts low appear, I see a stop sign. You won't find a phone with longer battery life than the Galaxy S24 Ultra. In our lab testing, which involves continuously browsing the web on 5G until the battery runs out, the Galaxy S24 Ultra in its default adaptive display mode lasted a huge 16 hours and 45 minutes. That beats the impressive 14 hours and 2 minutes the iPhone 15 Pro Max managed in our testing. It also outlasts the Galaxy S23 Ultra by more than 2 hours, as beats many other Android phones too. You'd have to buy a hardcore gaming phone with a massive battery inside like the Red Magic 9 Pro with its 6500 mAh cell to get any more battery life from your phone. Samsung didn't increase the size of the battery over last year's Ultra, it just improved power management on the Galaxy S24 Ultra so it saves more juice. The adaptive screen settings can be aggressive but you can turn them off if you need a bright display all time. You can also adjust settings like screen resolution and processor performance so to save more power. There are even more extreme options, Samsung used to have an ultra power saving mode. But now that's just another setting under the power saving features letting you limit the apps available, turn off age panels, dim the display and generally shut down everything you don't need to conserve every watt. There should be a more intelligent power management option that reads your habits and adapts the power saving to the way you use the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Oh wait, there is a such mode and it's called adaptive power saving but you will never find it. Adaptive power saving is buried under the settings menu then under device care. Then you have to tap the battery graph which is a button that doesn't actually look like a button but trust me, it's a button. Then tap power saving which also looks like plain text and not a button. Again it's a button. Hooray! You are almost there. Just find the three little dots in the upper right corner which is Samsung way to hide even more menus and then you will finally be able to open the adaptive power saving settings. Why Samsung? Why? Why does it have to be this way? Why can't my Galaxy S24 Ultra come with adaptive power saving turned on by default? If this feature is so useful, why is it hidden beneath 5 layers of menus, beneath buttons that don't look like buttons and sub-menus that are just cryptic dots? Enough is enough, fix the software or oh, this is my last Galaxy Ultra. The Galaxy S24 Ultra charges at 45W, which is a respectable charging speed fast enough to get you will past 50% if you only have a half an hour to charge your phone. In 15 minutes, my Galaxy S24 Ultra was just under 40% charged and it took around 45 minutes to charge the phone completely. That's even faster than Samsung promises. There are phones that charges faster like the OnePlus 12 that comes with an 80 watt charger. That phone can reach 100% charge in about half an hour and OnePlus even has a super fast wireless charger that is capable of 50 watt charging. The S24 Ultra can handle up to 15 watt wireless charging including the latest QI2 charging standard. The Galaxy S24 Ultra can also charge other devices wirelessly and 
if you can find wireless power sharing in the settings menu i will personally send you a price instead just add a wireless power sharing button to the quick settings menu if that's a feature you use often unlike the oneplus 12 the galaxy s24 ultra does not come with a charger in the box and if you want the fastest charging speed you will need to pay attention to the charger you buy you can spend a lot of money and get a big walmart from samsung or you can do right thing to get anchor 730 nano charger from amazon for around half the price a refreshed design does not make a true upgrade. New features, new technology, and lifestyle enhancing alternations too. And the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has all of this along with seemingly every other features or specification bump you could want from a new phone. Not only is it worth buying if you don't already own a Galaxy Ultra phone, I'd even say it's worth buying if you have a Galaxy S23 Ultra. It's really that good. Obviously, you don't need to upgrade your Galaxy S23 Ultra, but it's heartening to discover Samsung hasn't just sent out a bog refresh of its most expensive non-folding phone this year, which is really what it did with the Galaxy Z Fold 5 over the Galaxy Z Fold 4. The Galaxy AI stuff is being pushed hard and while some of it is worth your time, it's not a reason to choose the Galaxy S24 Ultra on its own. It's a combination of all its parts from the amazing battery life to the genuinely improved camera that makes it a must buy. Although I say it's even worth an upgrade from the year old Galaxy S23 Ultra, I do think you should mostly go into the Galaxy S24 Ultra with the intention of keeping it for years, quite apart from Samsung's efforts to use more recycled materials, the software update commitment, the sheer ability of the device and the price bump all shout, keep me in all honestly, I don't think you will tire of the Galaxy S24 Ultra or reach its full potential anytime soon, buy it and keep hold of it as you simply can't do much better. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.